Hello everybody, Achila here and as promised we're going to talk today about using context in React. So to avoid you waiting for all the node install and everything and then my machine fan goes crazy and then I need to wait it cool down so it doesn't come into the mic and whatnot. Uh, I just installed so you can trust me this is just a plain React app installation and now we're going to create this counter and we're going to be using context to it. Context is a really important tool to manage state into a React app if you don't want to bring a state management library. It's very powerful. It's not supposed to be used everywhere because it may cause some, some performance issues, especially if you're passing context to a, to a bunch of, uh, of different components. Every time a prop inside your context gets updated, uh, everything is going to be re-rendered. So you need to be careful with that, but it's a very useful tool to avoid prop drilling. So what is prop drilling? It's when you have one prop specific component and then this, com this prop needs to go down to the child of the child of the child. And there you go, passing down the prop to components that don't actually going to use it, but they need to have the prop in order to pass to a child that is going to be then using the component eventually. So that's called prop drilling. It's, um, it's usually a straightforward process that we all need to do at some point. But once you get like complex uh, component trees and you're doing that uh, over and over again, it can become difficult to maintain and it can become, um, especially because then you need to update many components if you're going to change a prop. So if you have this specific piece of state or this specific piece of data that you need to be jumping from a top branch in your React tree to uh, one very deep nested child, you may want to use context for this. And then in this case is very useful. So I'm going to bring a contrived example here just to show you how to use context in a TypeScript environment and have it properly typed and working. And then hopefully with that in hand, you can then take it to your other apps and be using it on any other place you feel that deserves it. So let's get started. So as always, I'm going to get started with um, adding a little bit of CSS to our component before we go down into what we're going to create. So um, you can just go down below in the in the chapter section in the, uh, this video description. On the chapter section, you can jump if you're not interested in what I'm about to do here with the CSS and then you can just jump into actually using uh, the section that you want to. So first I'm going to go to the app CSS and I'm going to delete everything in there and I'm just going to set some variables for us. So I'm going to have this faded black which is just an RGBA value of black and I'm going to set a default text color, which is just going to be white. The radius I'm going to set for 15 pixels for us to use with border radius. And I'm going to set a gap variable of 2 rem and this border. So this is by any means a design system. Uh, it's just like because I don't want to repeat myself and I want it to look somewhat consistent as we go through. So the controls is going to be a component that we're going to use and I'm going to set it to have uh, two columns and each column is going to take a whole fraction of everything and then here it's our first variable. We're going to set the grid gap to be actually the gap and we have a counter. The counter is going to be uh, the actual button and so I'm setting the appearance none so I can reset the styles of the browser. And here I'm going to set this default border and the default is going to be the text color. And yep, so background color is going to be this faded black. I'm going to set the border radius, some nice looking border shadow. Oh, I missed a way to do this. Um, da -da -da. 
and big font size because we have nothing there. Mm, yeah, I really like CSS, so I'm writing a little bit more than we actually need for the for me to show you what this app's going to do. But hey, we're front-end developers, right? So, so now I'm I'm changing the spread and the coordinates of the Y coordinates of the box shadow. So it's going to look like the button is being pressed. Um, and now I'm just some props for the display. Again, we're going to use the same border. And in this case, we're going to use this dark cyan blue and the faded black. So now our CSS is done, we can move on to start writing our components. So in here, I'm going to go to the source and I'm going to create a components folder and inside that components folder, I'm going to create a controls TSX and I'm also going to create a display TSX. So first the controls, we are going to export default a function component, it's going to be called controls. For now, let's not pass any prop because we don't have anything. And it's going to return a div. And this div is going to have the controls class, two buttons with the class name counter. One is going to be the add button and the other one is going to be the decrease button. And for now, they have nothing else to offer. We need to add then the the click handlers and everything else, but first we're going to write the context. Again, now the display. So the display is going to be pretty much the same thing. For now, we're going to be exporting a class component. This is going to return this div, which has uh, the class name display. For now, it's not going to show anything. We can fix that later. Now let's start using that and go to our app. So in our app, what we're going to do is remove this. We don't need it. And all this can go away. Great. And we don't need a wrapper. So I'm just going to use a fragment here. And we can add the display component and the controls component. Let's import them. So there we go. Oops, it looks very bad. I forgot in our index CSS. My body defaults. So here I'm setting it to be the size of the screen and I'm centering everything inside of it and I'm setting this background color. So there we go. And now we can start writing our context. Let's go for it. We are going to again open our file tree and we are going to inside source just simulating an actual development environment i'm creating this shared folder and inside the shared folder i'm adding this context tsx and this context css we are going to have first our default state which is going to have a count of zero and we're going to create our counter context so we're going to use create context from react and we're going to be passing undefined first and for that we're going to then create also our counter reducer and the counter reducer takes a state and takes an action then the switch is going to take the action as a case and if the action is increment we are going to return that the count is going to be the state count plus one. If it's decrement, it's going to return the state count minus one. And now we can export our counter provider, which is going to take the children in, um, and we are going to create now our use reducer and it's going to receive 
the counter reducer oops redo sir and our default state we need to also add the use reducer here and now let's return our counter context provider and the default value is going to be the state and the dispatch and inside it's going to take the children let's do this so it looks a little bit more organized and to make the user experience a little bit better we can create also our custom hook so we can create the use counter hook and this user counter is basically using the use context with our counter context and then if we don't have the context we're going to throw anywhere saying use counter must be used inside a counter context sorry a counter provider otherwise we can just return the context and now we need to add also the use context hook so this is great but this is not typed at all so we're going to start having issues if we don't type it properly um, so now let's start creating our types first of all we can create our action type which is we have two possible actions so we have increment and decrement so that's going to help us if we're going to be we we can type check whenever whatever dispatch is going to receive so there's no typos involved so i can just say here that type that action is going to be of this type i'm going to now export a type called state which is just going to be the type of default state I'm going to set also the state here to be of this type and already picked my title. And what this is going to do is that every time I change my default state, the type is all automatically going to be changed. So I don't need to change two places at once. In this case, it's almost no work because the line, it's the same file, but that's a good practice and i'm just going to create a type also for the dispatch so the dispatch is going to take my action as a parameter and it's going to return void and one more thing we need to also type the counter provider so let's import this type from react and this type is going to be react node and what we're going to do is actually saying that the children needs to be of this type so the react node type means that's either a fragment a react child or a react parcel something that react can work with and we are done so now we need to start using our context so let's head back to our app tsx and in our app tsx we are going to be using the state and the dispatch that come from our user counter use counter and we need to import use counter from our shared context and we are not using it inside a counter context so let's go to our index first and we need to wrap our app into our counter provider and now we can just pass our state and we're going to pass the handler as a dispatch and now it's breaking because yeah we don't take any props in this components so we need to fix them so let's go to our controls first and in our controls we're going to import the type 
dispatch. And we're going to say it as, yes, we are taking the handler and a handler is dispatch. And now we need to go to display and do basically the same thing. So we're importing state this time from our and we're saying that we're going to be taking count and now we set you set it to state and we use the count oh and i and we forgot to i forgot to type our context properly so let's do this that's why it's still breaking so we're going to say to the context which is actually the objective of this video right so the state is going to be state and dispatch is going to be dispatch or undefined. So by doing that, we can now refresh our page. All types are working, but we forgot to add, I forgot to add the on click here. So whenever we get the on click, it's going to call handler with increment. And when it's negative, we are going to, instead of increment, we're going to say decrement. Everything works. And here's the nice thing about types is that if we actually make a typo here, it's going to let us know. And so that's it, folks. I hope you have liked it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.